Good morning, First Assembly. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the room and those watching online. Can we stand together today? Everybody that's glad to be with the Lord's people and with the Lord today, put your hands together right now. There's joy in the house of the Lord. We're going to sing about it. We're going to worship together. There is joy in his house. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Paul said rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Here we go. Everybody, put your hands together with us. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, our God, he holds the victory. Sing it out. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. The God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung upon that cross, then he rose up from that grave. Our God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout. Come on and let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You may be seated. I can't think of anything more appropriate for Father's Day than for us to celebrate the dedication of a baby girl. 
today. So I'm going to invite Adeline, Addie, Rivenbark, and her parents, Jonathan and Lauren Rivenbark, to come to the platform this morning, along with big brother Grayson and uh, grandparents, Jack and Sharon Forbes, and Jason and Jessica Rivenbark. If you guys would just all come all the way up here and just stand behind me. Yeah, thank you. Grayson was going to bring his plus one, it would have been okay. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You know, that's, that passage right there, that one verse is known as the Shema. It means to hear, to hear. It was the, it was the cornerstone of Jewish faith. It still is, the Shema. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then this instruction is received, which also was echoed by the Lord Jesus himself. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So that for these moments, we bring this child, these parents bring this child, following the example of Hannah, bringing Samuel, and indeed following the example of Joseph and Mary when they brought the Lord Jesus, to say, hey, we, we bring this child, this gift of God, back to you and we dedicate this child to you we present this child to you thank you for giving up for trusting us to steward the growth and the life of this child and we commit ourselves to doing it in the way that you described in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and throughout the rest of the scripture and so as much as anything it's a baby dedication but it's a parent dedication and it's a grandparent dedication and it's an great-grandparent dedication and an aunts and uncle dedication and it's a church dedication that's what it is so what an incredible thing on Father's Day Jonathan and Lauren do you today recognize Adeline as the gift of God and give thanks for God's blessing do you now dedicate Addie to the Lord who gave her to you, surrendering all worldly claims upon her life in the hope that she will belong wholly to God? Do you pledge as parents and as grandparents that with God's help you will bring her up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, making every reasonable effort with patience and love to build the Word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Lord into her life? And now, church, will you stand? Do you agree to support these parents by your example and through acts of service? And do you agree to reinforce the biblical instruction, discipline, and love of this child, Addie, under the supreme rule of the Lord Jesus Christ? If so, you may signify by simply and strongly saying, we do. We do. Amen. Addie has already communicated to us that she would not want me to hold her. <laughs> and that's 100% okay. But I'm just gonna ask you if you'll just sort of extend your hand and join me in, in parents and grandparents, you guys just all kind of put it on. Yeah, there you go. Lord, we stand here in this moment just in awe of what it is you do. You create families. Lord, this, this essential unit of, of, of who we all are, the, the dad, the mom, and Grayson, and Addie, Lord, you put this family together along with these grandparents, and it's your work. We see that. So, Lord, as their pastor, I agree with these parents who come today to present Addie to you, to say thank you, and to make our commitment to do all we can to make sure that she comes to know you for herself 
at the earliest possible age. And we say and believe that you have a great plan for her life to mark this earth for the glory of Christ. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you guys bless this family one more time? Continue to worship. That's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Lay your burdens down. Here in the father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. We are embraced in the Father's house. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your acceptance of us. You invite us in. Your goodness and your mercy pursues us. It chases us all the days of our lives. Worship with Rachel as she leads us right now in this beautiful song called The Goodness of God. Amor nunca me 
falla mi existir en tus manos está desde el momento que despierto hasta la noche sé, yo cantaré de la bondad de Dios en mi vida ha sido bueno en mi vida ha sido tan tan fiel con mi ser con cada aliento yo cantaré de la bondad de Dios love your voice I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have been in the goodness God. All my life you have been faithful, oh yes you have. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. It's running after me. Hallelujah. And your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Oh, yeah. Because your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Sing it. Hey. Your goodness is running after. So, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I'm gonna sing, yeah With all my David confirmed in Psalm 23, he said, surely the goodness. What he was saying was, there's no doubt that the goodness and the unfailing love of God will pursue you all the days of your life. How many of you can testify of the goodness of God in your life this morning? Amen. 
God is so good, and we just want to, we want to acknowledge his presence in this place this morning. This is Father's Day, but he is our Father, Abba Father. We can come to him, and we can worship him as a daddy. Thank you so much for all that you've given to me, Daddy. Because there's so many times when we feel like there's a distance between us. But you know, God is right here as close as your Daddy. And so this morning, let's just worship Him as Abba Father. And know that His goodness is always pursuing after us. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the goodness of God that's in our lives today, God. We thank you, Father, that you are chasing after us constantly. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your unfailing love, your everlasting love, your unconditional love. Lord, you're always loving us, providing for us, helping us. We thank you for that this morning, Lord. And Father, as we lift up these in our congregation that is in need, Father, we ask, God, that you will touch their bodies. We, we pray for Carolyn Wells. We pray for Angie Moulds. We pray for Wanda Millsaps. Father, we lift up Jimmy and Parks Cruz to you, Lord, and we just pray, God, that you will touch them, Lord, at home this morning, that you will just bring healing to their bodies today. Father, we pray for Artie Summy, who is out of surgery this morning and is doing well. But, Father, we pray that you'll continue to minister your healing power to his life today, God. Bring peace and comfort. Lord, just let your love and your grace just overwhelm him right there in that hospital room this morning in Jesus' name. And, Father, we pray for Caddy Creel. Lord, we thank you for the good report that she's doing well this morning. Lord, we just pray, God, that you will just minister to her her body and to her mind today, God. Lord, give her rest and restoration in her, in her body and in her spirit today, God. We pray for Pastor Creel, God, that you'll strengthen him, encourage him, and lift him up, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that today. We thank you for your goodness in our lives. We thank you for the goodness of your healing power in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Isn't God good? Can we give my hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated this morning. I'm going to ask our ushers to come as we continue to worship the Lord this morning in the giving of our tithes and offerings. This is just another way that God is good to us, providing for us in so many ways. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you, God, for all that you've given to us, your provisions of life. We, we pray, God, for the gifts that we are bringing before you today, God, that you'll just bless them and multiply them and use them, Lord, to do the work of, of reaching a world that needs Jesus' love this morning. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I've asked Pastor Scott to stay here with me for a minute. Um, it's not fair that I asked him to work before I introduced him <laughs> to you here in this way, but, uh, but here we are. Um, Caddy did have a, a light stroke on Friday. Um, she has recovered really from any, any noticeable effects of that uh, very quickly but they just wanted to keep her for a couple of days just to, you know, run a tape, you know, keep, keep check, but she's doing very well. And so uh, thank you for continuing to remember them in prayer, but they did get word that she was going to be able to go home today. So I don't know where they are. They're watching right now. If they're still sitting there waiting for that person to come with the wheelchair to, you know, uh, bring her out of the hospital. But uh, if they're in transition, they may not be. But but if you are watching, Lamar and Caddy, we love you very, very much. And, um, and we're praying for you. Yeah. If you are on um, Facebook uh, or receive our emails, then you already know a little bit about who Pastor Scott is. But uh, he is just really uniquely qualified. The Lord, I believe, sent him to us in advance of what was going to be a, a very real need, his roots in this church go way back. And many of you, uh, especially if you've been here a while, many of you already know him. 
Uh, he has spent time as a, a senior pastor. He's been an administrative pastor. And he's been in youth ministry for many, many years, including 11 years as the district youth director for the West Florida District of the Assemblies of God. As the DYD at West Florida, he served on the board of trustees for Southeastern University. And, and you've already heard him encourage us in the Lord this morning. He's just a good brother. And uh, I remember meeting him many years ago. I don't remember the occasion, but not long after I had come as the minister of music, I had occasion to, to meet Pastor Scott, and I remember thinking, why is he not on staff at this church? <laughs> it just seems like it would make so much sense. I would, don't know who I was sure needed to, you know, leave so to make room, but I uh, <laughs> but, thought, oh, man. And so uh, he is going to, we're just going to, he's a, he's a staff, so what's his title? He's a staff pastor. He's, I said, he's Pastor Scott, and he's here to help. That, that's who he is. Um, his assignments are going to include pastoral care. Uh, for sure, and for some period of time, it's going to include youth, um, where he's going to help provide some stability and help us to, we're going to begin to pursue our next generation ministry in a little different way, um, uh, not, not completely upside down different, but we're going to really going to try to provide some additional connectivity between children and youth so that from the ages of zero to 18, there's just one really solid, beautiful experience for young people in this church, and uh, so... He's just a real gift. His wife, Joyce, teaches school. She's a chorus teacher at uh, W.C. Friday Middle School and uh, just a very gifted musician and is also the daughter of Walter and Phyllis Grant. And, uh, and they, the two of them are the parents of this musical genius sitting right over here. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> So the Lord has, has brought them. Uh, Pastor Scott, before we pray for you, I wanted to see if you wanted to offer anything. Uh, get this mic turned back on for you. <clears throat> well, I'm not an idiot. I know that they brought me here so that they could keep Michael on the keyboards. <laughs> so um, there you go. Anyway. But no, speaking of the goodness of God, it's just God's goodness in our lives that uh, he's opened this door. And um, I was sharing with Pastor Dennis a few weeks, maybe even a couple of months ago, I was reading in, in Ruth and uh, the passage where uh, Ruth goes out into the field to collect um, wheat. And... Um, they didn't realize that it was Boaz's field that she was going into. And Boaz was a family redeemer. He was part of Naomi's family. But the scripture starts out there in verse 2, and it just says, And it just so happened. And when I read that, God just stopped me and said, You're not just here. There's a reason for you being here. And that was before Pastor Dennis really even reached out to me. Um, I never had any thought or indication that I would be on staff here. But this is where it all started for me and Joyce. And um, this church means a lot to us. And so we're excited to be able to get, um, get back home. And um, I'm excited to get to meet uh, some of you that I do not know um, and uh, get to get reacquainted with some of you that I do know. I'm excited about uh, being able to work with our fantastic youth and youth leaders. There's just so much that God is, um, is making available to us, and we're just excited to be here. This is a, an awesome team. We have the greatest pastor in all the world and his wife. They are just amazing. Well, I do have family here. I don't want you to think that I walk around with an entourage all the time, but my family did come. Uh, my uh, aunt and uncle Gail and Barry Denton are here. My mom is here. My sister and her husband, uh, Zach and Susan Farmer, they're here. And Tyler and Beth, my nephew uh, and his wife, they're here as, as well. And, um, but anyway, just wanted to acknowledge that they're here, but they don't always, they're not always going to follow me around, so don't. 
but they should absolutely I, and, uh, I'm, I'm working on Michael to give me a theme song as I walk around the theme song would play uh, but anyway, we're excited to be here, and thank you so much for your prayers and your support as we go forward. Will you stand? I just want us to, to pray together that God would bless this family and, uh, and that he would lead them as they help to lead us. And I tell you, I'm encouraged to have him here um, I've told him that several times, uh, and probably will for a while, but really feel very strengthened and encouraged. And so, uh, Lord, we just come to you in this very special moment to say thank you again for this specific blessing. We thank you for Pastor Scott and Joyce, and we do thank you for Michael. Uh, Lord, what a gift this family has been for a very long time to this church. God, we thank you for the more than 30 years that Walter uh, faithfully served as a member of this team. In leadership here so Lord we pray that you would bless them in every possible way bless them in their health I pray that you'd bless them in their finances Lord there's some things on their heart they'd like to do uh, I pray that you'd bless them in those in those efforts Lord provide for them as they help to shepherd and provide for us and we we just recognize God your providential generous hand in all of this and we say thank you in Jesus name Amen Oh, you may be seated. Now, I want to talk to you real quick, especially it's, it's convenient because the Creels aren't glaring at me uh, from the front row <laughs> right now, but uh, we want to bless the Creels in a very unique and specific way. Uh, they're going to be making this move to Florida when in the, in the right time. It may happen very soon. Houses, you know, it sort of hinges on when their house sells, but as you may know, houses sell quickly. And... Um, so they're going to be making this move to Florida, and we want them to be able to have a mover, a moving company, professional movers, come in and, and help pack them, load the truck, drive the truck, unload the truck in Florida. It's not cheap, but we want to do that for them. I, I was considering this, the, you know, about how generous the Lord was that he allowed the Creels to serve here two different times. Uh, but this, their, what probably is their last full-time, you know, place of service, how blessed we have been to have them here. I mean, I, you agree with that. Uh, yeah, here, here. Yeah, yeah, man. But then I thought, what an incredible thing that the Lord trusted us to take care of them. There's only one church body in the world that has this responsibility and this privilege right now to take care of Pastor Creel and Caddy as they get ready to make this move. It's us. So I just believe we should bear up under that and really make that happen for them. I, out on the glass table, the round table in the foyer, I'd say in the rotunda, but... Out in the foyer, everybody knows where the glass table is, right? Just kind of give me some affirmation. Yes. On the glass table are some small envelopes that have dollar amounts written on them. If every one of those envelopes gets picked up uh, and returned with that dollar amount inside that envelope, we will have collected a little more than $10,000 to take care of this move for the Creoles. And man, I would love to see that table cleared today. There's a basket in the middle of the table in case you say well I would rather go ahead and take care of this right now because I don't know if I'll remember to bring this back next Sunday that's fine just throw it in the basket in the middle of the table it's fine um, if you're not using a check then make sure to write your information on that envelope uh, somewhere so that we know who you are so you can receive giving credit for that if you're writing a check make it out to the church that's what you'll always do if we're doing something like this but make it out to the church and but just snag one of those envelopes they range from $25 to $500 um, so various denominations 
uh, just go out there and, and find the one. There are a few that just have a blank so that if you wanted a $25 one or a $100 one and those were gone and that's what you want to do or you want to do more or, or you want to do a little less, that's okay too. If all you can do is 5 or $10, then thank God for you. Thank God for you. And, uh, but you can fill that in. But after church today, if you'll, if you'll grab one of those, some of them have, uh, have already been taken and some are already in the basket. So, um, but then next Sunday when you come, just drop it in the regular offering. We won't take a special offering separately, and we'll remind you. But just just bring it back, or give it to Tim, or give it to Joyce, or or anybody on staff. Really, that would be okay. But we want to take care of them. Will you join me in that? All right, all right. Happy Father's Day. I want to say, as just a very short point of personal privilege, Happy Father's Day to my dad who is, I know, at his church right now, but we'll probably see this later. So, Dad, I love you, and I'm just completely honored that you're my dad, and you uh, certainly give me something to aspire to. If I can be half the man and half the dad you are, then I'm, then I'm doing better than I'm doing now. So, I love you, and I just want to make sure to say that to you. Um, if you're a dad here today, I just want to ask you to stand, and uh, we want to honor you in this moment. So. Let me say this, if you aspire, if you aspire to be a dad, or will soon be a dad, will you join us in standing? Because we want to honor you too. That is a good godly, that's a good godly instinct. Yeah. You may be seated. God bless you dads, we love you. You know we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs after service today, and uh, so if you can stay and, and have some of that, drop a little something in if you can. Uh, that money uh, will go towards uh, youth camp uh, for our students, but stay around if you can. That's why we're dressed a little more casually today. Um, we're glad that you got that memo and did that. But I also recognize that Father's Day is a painful day for those who, um, who have already lost their father. The Lord's already taken them home. And so in this moment, without applause, if, if you feel some pain today because you're remembering your dad, would you stand in honor and memory of him at this time? Mm. You may be seated. Many, many. God bless you on this day. May it be a day that's just full of incredible memories of your dad's. In this moment, we've been considering the teaching of Jesus, who masterfully and often taught with stories called parables. The parable of the sower, the parable of the wheat and the weeds, the parable of the pestering neighbor, the parable of the growing mustard seed, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Today, we will turn our attention to a story that has often been called the parable of the prodigal son or the parable of the lost son, sometimes even the parable of the lost sons, but today we'll call it the parable of the father, the parable of the father. And to explore this today, I'd like to invite my friend, Cedric Guthrie, to come and share with us in the way that only he can. Jesus was invited with his men to a party, a dinner party like you're all expecting to do, but I think we'll beat the Methodists and the Baptists to our dinners today, fathers. But uh, Sea of Galilee had some fishermen that came together, and uh, but there were Pharisees there, and there were tax collectors, and there was just a rugged guys like uh, my friend here from Elizabeth City, those fishermen there, and uh, Mantio is where my grandfather had a boat, and so I know all about those rough and rugged men. So at, they're at this party, and I'm sure they've heard about it. I have to say it, uh, Jesus had some celebrity. He did some healing, and uh, he fed people. They've heard about him, but they haven't really met him. 
he comes into the party and there's someone that speaks out and says, Jesus, tell us a story. And so he said, all right. A certain man had two sons and one day the younger of the two sons came to the father and said, give me my share of your estate now. And so the father divided his wealth between the two sons. And a few days later, the younger son set off for a distant land. There, he squandered all the money he had on riotous living. And not long after that, a great famine swept over the land and the boy began to starve. He pleaded with the farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. But the husks of corn that he was feeding the swine began to look good to him. And still, nobody gave him anything. Finally, the boy came to his senses. At home, my father's servants have enough to eat and to spare. And here I am, starving to death. I, do. I shall go home and ask my father to hire me as one of his servants. And so he set off. He was still some distance from his home when his father saw him coming. And his father was so full of compassion that he ran towards his son. And he embraced his son and threw his neck on him and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and you. I, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father, he called to the servants and said, Bring me the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Put rings on his hand and shoes on his feet. And oh, kill the fatted calf. We must celebrate. For my son was lost and is found. Now, the older brother at this time was working in the field. And as he came home, he heard the noise of music and dance. And he asked one of the servants what was happening. Slamaloch, chipo de gila. Barbecue? He? He. Ebo? Ah. Who? Um. Fatted calf? Oh, a bull, wow. He, he. Younger brother? La. At this, his brother, the older brother, became very angry. And he said, in our English, so, uh, Dad, uh, you, uh, you killed the fatted calf. Uh, you haven't even uh, given me a goat that I might share with my friends. And my younger brother comes back after uh, spending your money on, uh, I hate to say it, harlots. And uh, for him... Uh, you killed the fatted calf? You know, I've never disobeyed you. Please, please, said the father. Try and understand. Everything I have is yours. You have want for nothing. But your brother has come back. He was lost and is found. 
Yes, he was dead. And is alive again. Come, son. Let us celebrate. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Thank you, Cedric Guthrie, for your ministry today. The story of the father. The story of the father. This is the longest parable of Jesus. This is the longest story he told. The characters of the story are well-developed, they're, they're nuanced, and it is interesting that Jesus tells three stories in this chapter, and they kind of come together as a set, all three with the same idea that God cares about those who are lost. At the beginning of the chapter, Jesus tells about the lost sheep and a shepherd who loves that lost one so much that he will search for it until he finds it, and when he has found it, and I quote, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, this shepherd calls his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because my, my lost sheep has been found. And Jesus said, there's more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed. It's incredible to think that in heaven they rejoice when someone who was lost is found. Then Jesus told a story about a lost coin and a woman who lights a lamp and sweeps her entire house and searches carefully until she finds it. And when she found it, she calls her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I found my lost coin. And Jesus said again, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. That's all just warming up to the text of the day about this lost son. And it begins with these words in Luke 15, 11, where it says, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. So let's read it from Luke 15, from the New Living Translation. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. Two sons. The younger says, I want my share now. His share probably would have been one third. The older brother would have had two thirds of the estate. The younger brother would have had one third of the estate. And he's saying, just cash me out. Just cash me out. Which, and it makes sense when the father later says to the older son, everything I have is yours because it's, it's what was left. He says, I'll provide you with this cash. Our students are helping with the cookout. Thank you, students. Just cash me out. But the underlying message of this, if you're saying I want my inheritance now, I want what I would receive at your death. The underlying message is really that I wish you were dead now. I wish you were already gone. Dad, happy Father's Day. <laughs> There's, this, is, this is complete and utter rejection of the father from this younger son. To say, I wish you were already dead, and as if you were already dead, I'd like you to cash me out now. Provide me with my portion now. I do not care about our relationship. I do not care about your house. I do not care about this fellowship that we enjoy. I don't care about those things. Give me what I can have for me. Provide what I can have for me. Give me mine. I wish you were dead now so that I could have this wealth that I covet. The father could have denied him. The father could have rejected that request. The father could have disowned him and disinherited him at this request. 
but the father gave him his agency and i want you to know that god gives us our agency that means we get to decide whether we're going to be committed and in relationship and and esteem God and love God and serve God we can make that decision or not but he gives us our agency he allowed him to choose he cast him out and he let him go it says in verse 13 a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money in wild living about the time his money ran out and isn't this just always the way about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But as Cedric told us, no one gave him anything. No one gave him anything. This story took a predictable turn. Had you not heard this story, you would know that this foolish, selfish, short-sighted choice of this younger son was going to bring him to a place of painful reality at some point. You may have your agency, sir. You may have your agency, ma'am. You may get to choose but when you choose poorly, it will bring us to a place of pain every single time as we leave the Father's house. We know the story, but if you don't know the story, you could predict this. Something for this foolish young person who so disrespectfully demanded something to which he was not yet entitled. But he's here at this lowest place imaginable. He has hit the bottom bear in mind that pigs would have been considered unclean jews did not associate with pigs they didn't keep pigs they didn't raise pigs they didn't eat pigs they were unclean so the fact is that now not only is he no longer living in a house where he is a son but he's in a place where he is now a servant not to people but he is a servant to pigs He's at the lowest place imaginable. Unclean animals, not, not just literally, but spiritually unclean. He's broke, he's broken, he is dirty, he is hungry. But verse 17 says, when he finally came to his senses, when he finally came to his senses, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here I am dying of hunger I will go home to my father and say father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I am no longer worthy of being called your son please take me on as a hired servant so he returned home to his father you'll love that one little phrase so he returned home to his father so he returned home to his father so he returned home to his father. That is an option for some people in this room this morning. So he returned home to his father. Home, home, home. At home, things are better. At home, even the servants have plenty of food. Here I'm dying of hunger, but I'll go home to my father. And you can see him rehearsing what he's gonna say. He's nervous. How am I gonna be received when I left? I was rejecting my father. I drove away with my hand out the window saying to my dad, this is what I think about you and your home. It might not go so well when I get back. It, it could turn a different direction. My father gave me what I asked for but I know I hurt him. I know I caused him pain. Don't know how this is going to go. And so he's practicing. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. There are sort of these three basic prongs. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. 
I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. I think that's it. I think that's it. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Please just make me one of your hired servants. And over and over and over again, as he takes that long journey back, the Bible says he had gone to a distant land. As he makes that long journey back, he's hungry. Not only is he hungry, but he's filthy. And not only is he hungry and filthy, but he has to be exhausted. And you see him practicing that. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. It says, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. I have the idea that his father saw him before he saw his father. Yeah. I have the idea that this son's head was hanging kind of low. And he's just looking just right in front of him. If I can just take one more step. If I can just take one more step. And as he rounds that last turn, I have the idea that his dad saw him before he saw his dad. Because I'll tell you, that's the way it is in the kingdom of God. Your father God sees you before you see him. He sees you first. Filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Isn't that just about the most beautiful passage in the whole Bible? Who is God? He's filled with love and compassion. How is God? He's filled with love and compassion. How does God do what God does? He's filled with love and compassion. Filled with love and compassion. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. The only way that happens is that the father was looking every day. You have the idea that, that he said to his older son, just take care of things, son. Just, just handle the family's business. I'll be on the front porch like I am every day. I'm watching and I'm waiting. I'm watching and I'm waiting. The father's watching expectantly. The father is watching faithfully. The father is watching ready to run. If that's you today, then you're thinking, man, should I go? Should I go? Should I go? Should I go? Father's watching, and he's ready to run. There's no question about what the reception will be when the sun comes into view. There will be no circumstance of clothing that will keep him away. There will be no circumstance of choice that will keep him away. There's not one thing in what this son is doing or has done or has ever done that will change the response of this father who is filled with love and compassion. When that son turned his face back toward the father, the father ran to him because he was waiting for that moment. Waiting for that moment. El padre está mirando, listo para correr hacia ti. The father is watching, ready to run to you. Skylin, just come out and come start walking toward me, if you will. Sorry, I didn't warn Skylin. As he's watching and he sees his son, But I want you to know that he didn't just come out and say, son, I'm glad that you made it back. Son, I'm glad that you're here. I, you're, you're received. Head on up to the house and we'll get something going. But this son who is exhausted and filthy, you see the dad just saying, hey, come here. Come here. I'm gonna walk this last step with you. And he as much brings him back to the house as just allowing him to walk to the house. Thanks, man. I love you. He, just, he doesn't just run to him to accept him. 
he runs to him so he can walk back with him. And if you take that first little step, man, God will walk with you the rest of the way. And they embrace, and then his son starts this, this speech that he's practiced. Verse 21, his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And I love the way the New Living Translation renders it. So the party began. <laughs> Pastor Derwin, you can come. See him. Did you catch what happened? He had practiced that speech probably hundreds of times by this point. There are three basic things I want to say to my dad. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. But when he gets to his father and his father gets to him, he never got that third thing out. Read it in the passage. He said, I am no longer, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And before he can say, make me a hired servant, his dad stops him and says, quick, bring the best robe. He doesn't let him get that part out. Why? Because in the kingdom of God, there are no hired servants. There are just sons and daughters who are received when they come to the father. Just sons and daughters. Sons, there's no room for hired servants. We're not hirelings. We've been brought into the house. Bring the best robe. Which, which, which robe? Which the, mine. Go to my room. Get my robe and bring it to him. It's the best robe in the house. Rather than just bring shoes, I just have the idea that that dad probably kicked his own sandals off and said, here, son, put these on. I know your feet are hurting and bloody. Put the ring of my authority on his hand. He's received. He's re yeah, but what about what he did? That was what the older brother said. But what about what he did? Yeah, but what? Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. It doesn't matter what he did. He's my son. He's my son. And he's welcome home. Doesn't matter how long, doesn't matter how far away. But you are a son and you are a daughter. So this morning I'm going to ask you to stand. Our team is going to lead us in worship. But this is a call to the altar today. And immediately, I know what, I know what the devil does. Is that, well, if you go down there, people are going to think that you, just, you had completely backslid or that you weren't serving God or that you weren't. I'll tell you one thing. When that father and the son connected, it was nobody else's business. I mean, sometimes we just barely turn away for half a second and it's time to come run back home. <laughs> but maybe you've traveled a far distance for a long time. That's okay too. It's not our business. This is between you and God. But I'm gonna ask you today, as they lead us in this powerful worship song, will you come back to the Father from wherever you are? And let him meet you here in this altar space today on Father's Day. It'll be the most important Father's Day you've had in a long time. Will you lead us?
invitation to let it all go I see it now I'm laying it down I know that I need you Run to the fire I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I'll run to the Father plan from the start your son for redemption the price for my heart and I don't have a context for that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend all I know I run to the Father, I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait My heart needs a surge, my soul needs a friend So I run to the Father is running to life from death and I feel this rush deep in my chest your mercy is calling out just as I am you pull me in and I know I need you now run to the Father Uh, there have been some incredible things happening in this altar this morning. I can tell you some incredible things. I want to say if you're watching, if you're watching right now or if this is weeks or months later that you're watching this, that the Lord sees you and he's ready. He's ready when you are. Uh, just got to talk to him. Just got to talk to him. Make that turn. Make that just that, that tiny little turn and let him come to you. And I want us to pray in here today. There may be some, I believe there are some, who just didn't quite have the, it's a very public thing. I understand that. It's a very public thing. 
But maybe you're standing here and you're saying, well, I just, I do need that. But let's just pray together. Let's pray together. Lord, we pray together that you would receive each one of us, Lord. To the extent, the Bible says, Lord, that all we like sheep have gone astray. All of us, Lord, there have been moments for each one of us, no matter who we are, how long we've been in relationship with you, no matter how long we've been saved, there have been these moments where we've just sort of lost our way. We've turned away. And Lord, sometimes a, a moment can turn into a day and can turn into a week and a month and a year or to many years. So as we're standing here, God, we repent. And we say, will you receive us? As we turn our hearts to you, welcome us home, Lord. Welcome us home. And we say thank you. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just do a little bit more of that. My heart has been in your sight. Long before my first breath Running into your arms Is running to life from death And I feel this rush deep in my chest Your mercy is gone Come on, can you give God a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> ah, what a great Father's Day. What a great Father's Day. Hey, can we make our commitment to the Lord that we make every Sunday morning? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 1914. I love you guys. If you can stay and have a hamburger or a hot dog, they'll be ready out out over in the uh, Oak Grove, uh, off to the side in the shade. It's a little cooler today. If you can't stay, that's okay. And if you, if you don't have any cash with you or anything, that's okay too. Just come get a hot dog. We love you guys.